Okay, so I'm just going to talk through uh, a basic introduction to algebraic fractions. Uh, you will find that they get much more difficult as you go through uh, courses on this, but this is just uh, a basic introduction. Okay, so uh, the simple idea with algebraic fractions is that we do the same thing that we would do as if we had numbers. For example, 2 over 5 plus 3 over 5, the bottom number, the denominator, would stay the same, and we'd add the top numbers and we'd get 5 over 5. We do exactly the same thing in this case here. We've got 2 over x plus 3 over x, so altogether we've got 5 over x. The denominator stays the same. In the second case, we've got the same sort of idea. The denominator is the same, so that is just going to remain as 5. This time I've got an x plus x, therefore I've got 2x. The third one is slightly more difficult. I've got a 2 and a 3 on the bottom. So I need to think what is the number that 2 and 3 both go into. And they're both going to go into 6. How do I get from 2 to 6? I times that by 3. So times the top by 3. Now 3 times x is 3x. Same again with this one. I've got 3. I need to get to 6 times by 2. So times the x by 2. So I then therefore end up with 3x plus 2x, which is 5x over 6. So I do the same idea that I would with normal fractions. Okay, and then a couple more, again getting slightly more difficult. 2x over 4, 3x over 5. In this case here, what do 4 and 5 both go into? I can make them both into 20. So times this by 5, times the top by 5, 2x times 5 is 10x. How do I get from 5 to 20 times by 4? So 3x times by 4 is 12x. I'm adding, so I've got 10x plus 12x, 22x over 20. Okay, and then this next one, okay, this looks a bit more, more challenging. I've got an x here and a 5 here, and I need to find a denominator that basically x goes into and 5 goes into. Well, the shortcut for finding a denominator is just to times the two together. So if I just make the denominator 5x, and then I think, well, how did I get from x to 5x? I times this by 5, so I do the same for the top, so 2 times 5 is 10. Equally, this one, it's currently 5. How do I get from 5 to 5x? Times by x, so times the top by x as well. So I get this, and then I've got 10 plus 3x on the top, and I've got 5x on the bottom. Okay, next one. I would have a little look at some multiplying. Uh, the rules of multiplying is straightforward. You just do top times top, bottom times bottom. So it's the same with this one. Now x times x. Now x times x is x squared. 2 times 3, 6. There we go. The next one, we've got an x squared times x. Now x squared times x is x cubed. 4 times 2 is 8. So we just follow the same rules that we would do with numbers. Okay, next one is dividing. Now the rule for dividing numbers, if you remember, is to keep this, the first fraction the same, to then do a multiply, and then to flip the second fraction. So I get this thing here. So let's simplify this out. So I'm going to get 3x times 4, so that will be 12x. On the bottom, 10 times 2x is... 20x. Now this time I can actually simplify. I've got an x on the top and an x on the bottom. So in effect I can just cancel those out. So I end up with 12 over 20. Now again, what can I divide both of those by? Well, I can divide by 4, divide by 4. So that's going to be 3 over 5. So that's my simplified answer for this question. OK, and then the last one, let's do the same thing. So we keep the first fraction, so 2x squared over 5, times by 2 over x. Simplify this. So this is going to be 2x squared times 2, which is 4x squared over 5x. Now, think of it like this. I've got an x squared. That's x times x on the top. And I've got an x on the bottom. So one of these x's can cancel out. So I get 4x over 
five. Okay, and then the last questions we'll look at, a couple of more challenging questions. So this time I've got a two and I've got a four. Okay, so I'm going to try and make this bottom number here into a four as well. Well, if I make this four, then I have to times the top by two. So times this by two, times the top by two as well. Now x plus one times by two gives me two x plus two times everything by two. So I've now got this as my new first and second fraction. Okay, so times by two times by two. And then I can do the same as before. I've got a 2x and a 2x. So that gives me 4x. 2 plus 3 is 5. And that's all over 4. Okay, a couple more to look at. This time I've got a 3 and a 4. Well, I'm going to make them both into 12. Now if I times this fraction by 4 times the top by 4. Now 2x times 4 is 8x, minus 2 times 4 is minus 8. Now this time I'm going to times this second fraction by 3. So 4x times 3 is 12x, minus 6 times 3 is minus 18. And I'm adding all this together. Same again, the bottom number is going to stay at 12. I've got an 8x and a 12x, which is 20x, minus 8, minus 18 is minus 26. Okay, so that is my answer for this one. And then I've got one question left. So we've saved the most difficult one to last. And we're getting into the kind of the grade, perhaps grade B GCSE questions when we have algebraic fractions looking like this. Well, I use the same trick that I had before. Well, what can I make x plus one and x plus two go into? I just multiply the two together. So this is what I'm gonna have on my denominator. Now how do we get from x plus 1 to this? Well I times the bottom by x plus 2 so I need to times the top by x plus 2 as well. Now this time I'm going to put the bracket in because I'm timesing the whole thing by x plus 2. Equally this one here, the second fraction, how do I get from x plus 2 to this denominator? Well I need to times that by x plus 1 so I need to times the top by x plus 1 as well. So I do that. Okay, so that's my first step. My second step is then I need to expand out this bracket. Now 3 times x is 3x, three, 3 times 2 is 6, so that's my first one. And then on my second one, 4 times x is 4x, four, 4 times 1 is 4, and again I've got the same denominator. And I'm adding all this together. So finally I've got a 3x and a 4x, which is 7x, a 6 and a 4, which is 10, and that is all over x plus 1, x plus 2. There we go. That's a, a, an introduction to algebraic fractions. They do get more complicated, but this is, like I said, an introduction to the basic idea.